Welcome to episode 94 of Stageworthy. I'm your host, Phil Rickaby. Stageworthy features conversations with Canadian theatre makers of all stripes, from actor to director to playwright and more. If you want to drop me a line, I would love to hear from you. You can find Stageworthy on Facebook and Twitter at StageworthyPod, and you can find the website at StageworthyPodcast.com. And if you like what you hear, please consider leaving a comment or rating on Apple Podcasts, Google Music, or wherever you get your podcasts. Comments and ratings help new people find Stageworthy. My guest this week is Tennille Reed. Tennille plays the lead in Theatre Inamorata's Grey, opening this week at the Commons Theatre in Toronto. Have you already talked with Courtney? I talked with Courtney last you night. Did? Yeah. Oh, it's last yeah. night. We we did some interesting talking about her directing style and things yeah. like that. Um, she used words like control freak and bossy. <laughs> and, oh, and, not at all. <laughs> not at all. What's always funny is the way that people perceive their own yeah. their own style, which is often completely different from how other people yeah oh, perceive it. Totally. No, I find she's a. a very gentle director <laughs> like i would not say bossy at all mm. um she's she's really good at talking to us as actors mm. and um i think well i mean she's an actor uh herself so mm-hmm. i think she really gets it and, and knows how to be delicate about some things but um be firm about asking and think yeah. uh, other things and being clear um yeah. so i quite i quite enjoy the process so far we've That's good you know we've just had um two weeks of rehearsals very um here and there mm-hmm. they haven't been consecutive days and that's how we'll be going until the end of the month and mm-hmm. then starting september will be every day well i mean in september you're starting to get into like yeah you're starting to to, to get into the performance mode the so real stuff yeah. yeah um how long have you been working on it mm-hmm. um before like you've been doing a couple of weeks of of uh of sort of like on and off rehearsals how have have you uh, have you been attached to the project for long or yeah so theater in Amarada is um a collective that i'm a part of with three other women mm-hmm. um and we've been looking at this particular script i think for the last two years i think it's mm-hmm. been over two years I, I can't put an exact date on it but it's been a while mm-hmm. and um chris van solen who is writing it um, he approached us with an idea of um, doing a picture of Dorian Gray, actually using uh, chunks of text from all of um, Oscar Wilde's work mm, and okay. um, putting together this very poetic piece. And we, 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 he had you know, composed that, um, gave it to us, we read it, and, um, and we, had, we were inspired by so much. And we also just wanted to hear... Chris's voice too, mm-hmm. and yeah. and shift things around quite a bit, and um, because we wanted it to be um, a female centered mm-hmm. story, and, and uh, so he he went back to the drawing board and and wrote it in his own words, and some of the text still lingered, and you know it would be like that. We we go back to uh, the reading it and then giving him feedback, mm-hmm. and then he would take it away and come back with something totally new. Um, uh, more advanced hmm. and so um i guess when when was it we had a, a a few like official readings with people from the outside to come in and like directors mm-hmm. and other writers to come in and give it a listen and um especially over the last uh year we've been stepping that up a lot more and then mm-hmm. finally um in the spring we we came to a script that was finally you know, uh, production ready. So when he started writing it, did he have the, did he have the idea of women, like a, a woman Dorian Gray or did he? He, he did. Mm-hmm. That's why he brought it to mm. us. Cause he knew we were, were very much about featuring yeah. female stories. And we love the story for some of the themes that it does present. Um, it doesn't translate completely, mm-hmm. um, but we're, we're pretty you know, we've we've definitely focused on some really great gems mm-hmm. of themes, um, and uh, yeah. So he 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 was the one who came up with that. That's cool. That's cool. <laughs> yeah. um, 
And uh, just, just, I want to talk a little bit about about you and theater and sure. things like that. So, where, what introduced you to theater? What was it that made you want to do theater? Great questions. Uh, yeah, I, I think. I think if I were to go to the very beginning of my time, it would be um, uh, Honest Ed's. Okay, okay. And shopping there with my parents when I was like three or four and seeing those still photos that were in the hallways and oh, the yes! staircases that would go all the yeah. way up. And they were all black and white and they'd be showing these, you know, all of these Mervish actors just mm-hmm. emoting so much, <laughs> like that one little <laughs> capture of yeah. like their huge performance, you yeah. know? And, I was so stunned by like, just astonished by how much emotion mm-hmm. was coming through that photo. Yeah. Um, so that was my first like glimpse of like, there is theater mm-hmm. out there. <laughs> and then, you know, growing up um, in elementary school and high school, we would go to um, the Stratford Festival, mm-hmm. Shaw Festival. Um, and the more I got exposed to that, the more I, I got hungry for, you know, that kind of mm-hmm. performance, that kind of um, mm-hmm. venue. And then, so I, I started doing it in school, and then it just kind of continued in various ways until I came to be here. Yeah. So when you when you were doing it in school, like you were doing like the the extracurricular, yeah, 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 extracurricular or community theater. Mm-hmm. I started to um, uh, branch out into the community <laughs> <laughs> in high school. Um, there was a, a a group called Queensville Players. Mm-hmm. I, I grew up in Newmarket, right. north of here, and they did um, they did two productions in two consecutive years, and I was involved with both of them. I think West Side Story uh, was my first musical, yeah. probably my last, <laughs> and uh, Princess Ida. Well, yeah, no, actually, that was a musical too, but I. It was more chorus singing, so it was when, different. <laughs> when you were, I guess, because, you know, there's only so much theater that you can do in the school, because they do, like, yeah. you know, one big show. Right. Well, and we did got... Sears Drama Festival okay. as well, yeah. which was, you know, it was something a little bit broader, mm-hmm. but you're right. It's limited. <laughs> yeah. So you've got to sort of, like, branch out if, you, if you're really starting to get the bug. Yeah. 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 Um, at what point did you decide that this was what you were going to do? Like... Because you go from, like, it's sort of like a fun thing to do, and then at some point it's like somebody suggests that you could do it, quote-unquote, for a living. Mm -hmm. And yeah, at what point did that happen for you? It... It um, it happened officially quite late. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, I, uh, I, I guess it was 10 years ago, mm-hmm. um, up, like after university and doing, I did uh, stage and screen studies mm-hmm. at Queens and so dabbled more and more with theater there and film and came to Toronto and did it very uh, unprofessionally. Like mm-hmm. It was just amateur. Right. Um, and then I decided after traveling a little bit and coming back here that I wanted to do it officially, but start with um, a theater conservatory training. Okay. So I went to George Brown College, their three-year program mm-hmm. at the age of 30. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, How long ago was that? Well, that's going to age. Okay. I don't want to be <laughs> were, they, were they at the Young Center then? Uh, at the Young Center, okay. yeah. Because yeah. I, was, I was at George Brown oh, no in the at the River Street studio. Oh, so like cool. way before. Okay, yeah. yeah. No, uh, so I, I've been out of the gates for five years. Okay, yeah. So, yeah, so eight years then. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I started mm-hmm. and uh, and yeah uh, it, that was that was my turning point of like I I want to do this I want to be good at it I want to be informed on yeah. you know that world in a in a, a greater capacity and then after graduating it's been um, exploring that more and more in the professional world. What was it like going to George Brown? Yeah, you know, out <laughs> of your twenties. Yeah, right. I I am so grateful that I did do it a bit later. Mm. I don't think I would have survived if I was younger. Mm. I think uh, I did a lot of growing up in my 20s. Mm-hmm. I got to travel quite a bit and live elsewhere on my own mm-hmm. and um, and find myself that way. Yeah. Um, I think if I had just been out of high school and uh, went to theater school, I would have had a I would have just been floundering to figure mm-hmm. out who I am because I'd be playing all these different yeah. characters or being told to play this because of, you know, 
uh, whatever they were trying to get out of yeah. me, but it, it would it would make my identity or how I identified with myself very yeah. confused, I think. So I enjoyed it. Because <laughs> when we were, I mean, my entire class was pretty much all like, we were all like 19, yeah. maybe 20. Yeah. And Peter Wilde, who was the head of acting at the time, always That's used right. to say, I wish you would come back to me when you were 30. Right. Like he just, oh, and like, he that was his thing. teaching when I was yeah. 30 in there. I know, I know right? <laughs> But he like said that to us Peter. all the time. Like, oh, so, you're all so young. I wish you'd come to me when you right. were 30. And we were all like, what are you talking about? Yeah. You know, we yeah. didn't know. Right. Um, did you, did you, you, like that, that program can be pretty intense. Yeah. Did you find, I mean, you were saying about how like you would have been floundering, but I've also yeah. heard in the last little while, some criticism of the, of the program in recent years in terms of, of, of uh, how, how people are treated. And yeah. did you find that that going in a little older maybe gave you more of a backbone? Definitely. To that? Definitely. Yeah. Um, yeah, absolutely. Hmm. I mean, um, I got so much out of that experience mm-hmm. because I could get past some of, you know, the, the harsher criticism. Mm-hmm. So I didn't have to deal with the harsh criticism so much like it was... I, I guess my my end goal was pretty strong, and mm-hmm. so I could take what I what I needed, right, and then move on from that. Um, I mean, that being said, I did develop insomnia during my second year um, because of how intense it mm-hmm. was and those long days. You know, sometimes mm-hmm. twelve hour days. Yeah, six, yeah, yeah. Six days a week. If you did, you do period study. Oh yeah. Your, okay. So, oh yeah. So like, well, I mean. Period study was an intense thing, but I like. I remember always, like even we were weren't in school, we were at the library. Like right. as soon as vocal mask was introduced, it was like okay, so I go to school and then I go to the Metro Reference yeah. Library. That's like, and on the weekend I'm at the Metro Reference yeah. li- Library. So it was like so encompassing. It was really concentrated, and yeah. and I, I found myself like I'd go home and it'd be around eleven at night, maybe maybe midnight, and trying to fall asleep and. It, It'd be like a montage going through my brain, flashes of the day, because mm-hmm. I had no time to really digest yeah. it. Yeah. Um, but I got better. I'm, I'm fine now. <laughs> I, I actually, twice when I was at George Brown, developed uh, like a crick in my neck where I couldn't turn my head. Yikes. Yeah. Like, and it was like in my second year, I think around p- period study had happened, and in third year as well. Like, just yeah. sort of like my head tilted to one side and I Ow. couldn't like move it. Oh, it was geez. insane. But, you know, the, I mean, it's a stressful program. It that conservatory is. thing is so amazing. But you don't have time to compress at the end of mm-hmm. every day. No, decompress. Yeah, absolutely yeah. not. And, uh, um, I mean, the the upside is that you have this group of people that you're doing it. You're in it with them. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, I was lucky. I, I really loved my class. Mm-hmm. We got along very well. And um, everyone was very supportive of each other. And so... That, that helped. When that happens in theater school, that's like so. It's a gift. It is because that doesn't yeah. happen with every class that that people gel like that. And yeah, in some classes, people just don't get along. Yeah, it's true, and um, and it's it's. I don't know if it had something to do with like the the age span. Like we had mm. we had some uh, some who were just out of high school, and then we had some who, you know, already had an undergrad under their belt mm. and then they had me mm-hmm. yeah <laughs> it was 30 <laughs> so um something maybe about that kind of balance maybe helped. yeah um, but they were and i'm still in touch with lots of them and yeah. uh I, I just find them a, a lovely group yeah uh did you did you graduate with a larger class or did yes. you yes yeah. we had oh my god it it was like 19, I want to oh say. Oh, my goodness. They would have I been think. freaking out with like 19. I know. We, we went into our third year with like, I think, 14. And they were like, we don't know what to we do with you. you. I know. I know. Crazy. Yeah, yeah, we had a big class. Mm. I think, but um, I think it, it spoke to how tight we were as mm-hmm. an ensemble. Yeah. Um, because it, like, how how can you cut people when, you know, that many people are, uh, we're keeping each other buoyant. Yeah. You know? it's, yeah. It's, no, Absolutely. Absolutely. Quite a community. Um, so how long after you left school did you get involved or like uh, help, like join up with, with theater in Immortata? 
In a Murata. In a Murata. Yeah, it's yes, okay. Yeah. Everyone gets it. I'm sure it just it. It's transposes just, yeah. the thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, it, it was the summer after I graduated. Mm -hmm. Michelle Langill, who was in going into second year at George Brown, um, she she had this idea to group us, myself, Leslie Robertson, Hillary Carroll together, mm -hmm. and just start thinking about... Um, uh, plays that we could do that are more female centered mm -hmm. um, and uh, and so you know we we started so so keenly we had a website and we got twitter mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and uh, we you know we, we read a bunch of plays and um, the more we researched stuff that we wanted to do the more we found that there wasn't much that we wanted to do that was out there that mm -hmm. either hadn't been done already quite you know, quite recently, mm -hmm. or it just wasn't, it wasn't landing enough mm. for us. Um, so, so we started, uh, we started writing on our own. Um, we worked on a play for a full year called Behind about our experiences as servers mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and like how women, um, uh, navigate that world. Yeah. And, uh, so we worked on it for like a year. We were all in it. We were um, meeting maybe every two weeks with different drafts or different scenes. We were all collaborating and it, it never panned out. Mm. <laughs> it just, it was almost like too many hands in the pot yeah. and great ideas kind of got snuffed out by other ideas. We lost sight, I think, of what, what it could mm -hmm. have been, you know? So okay. we stopped that. Um, and then Chris came along with the, his idea and Michelle decided to, take a script into her own hands and mm. she she started writing on her own too okay. and she's a strong writer so it it made sense that she would be the one to, mm. to do that in our group um yeah so that would have been five years ago mm. have you been working on gray for five years no no okay. just about like two years okay okay we were doing um we had done smaller projects mm -hmm. no like nothing that was like a full fully mounted show mm -hmm. um we did some little workshops um one was uh ibsen's ghost it was a jm barry one act mm -hmm. and we uh we cast it with all women and it was it was satire anyway so it was easy to like play on that satire yeah. with a full female cast and um and then we we did uh, on the table which was uh an evening of uh scene readings of uh uh, with females instead of you know, females in in me men's roles, mm -hmm. so we did like High Life and Glengarry Glen Ross nice. and um, uh, a bunch like that. I yeah. can't remember all of them now. But um, and we had people come and it was like an evening of food and, and playing and discussion and mm -hmm. just to get a, a broader idea of like what what women were going through of all ages in the industry mm -hmm. and um, giving them a chance to like read something that they normally wouldn't, you know, yeah. go out for. And also just like building our community. That's kind mm -hmm. of what we've been doing for the last five years since mm -hmm. we haven't done a real, like a real show. Mm -hmm. um, yet we do have a beautiful community around us. We've been doing these fundraisers annually. Um, we've been calling them Virgin burlesques. <coughs> and basically okay. it's, um, uh, tagline is you never forget your first time. Uh -huh. And uh, the first year we did it, um, there were a there, well, who am I? it was Michelle, myself, and Hillary. Mm -hmm. We did our very first burlesques, okay. guided by a professional burlesker and a uh, jagger. Mm -hmm. uh, we created our own routines. Us being actors, they were very uh, story based. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, of course, yeah. <laughs> um, but it was incredibly liberating. So much fun. Um, a lot of people came out for that. Uh, we also had other like prizes and other yeah. acts as well throughout the night. Mm -hmm. um, kind of in that original sense of a burlesque where yeah. it's like a variety show. Yeah. So we had um, some, some song routines, some comedy. And we've been doing that for four years now. Mm. And, uh, and each year we bring in two or three new virgins to pop their cherries <laughs> <laughs> and do a, a burlesque and it's been a lot of fun and can i ask what what was it that that drew you to burlesque as a mm -hmm. as a form of like the to do it regularly but also to like to perform it for the first time what yeah. was it that made you want to do that yeah um I mean, the simple answer is that sex sells. <laughs> well, there is that. There is that. Um, 
it really sells. The more <laughs> complex answer would be that, I mean, we were we were very much interested in um, our own like sensuality, mm-hmm. sexuality, yeah. um, really owning that mm-hmm. and body types, owning like the different uh, body types and the beauty of all of them. Mm-hmm. Um, that's been a big part of of our group um kind of leveling that field of, it's not just one yeah. you know ideal there's so many ideals and and so that played into the idea of burlesque because we we are all different body types mm-hmm. um it was a way that we could express our sexuality or sensuality mm-hmm. um but also get kind of crafty with it yeah and, and um I did my first burlesque on my birthday. It was my birthday, and so I made my routine. I called it Sad Birthday Girl. <laughs> and I came on with a cupcake, and like my my deal was that uh, I got stood up on my birthday, so I was going to take things into my own hands and tease the audience. And that, became, that became that. <laughs> well, yeah. It's interesting because burlesque is actually an art form that does embrace so many different uh, uh, body types and looks and things like yeah. that. So I can definitely see, see that. Um, has it been difficult to convince other people to take part? Hell no. <laughs> <laughs> we had so many people approach us after that first for last mm-hmm. to ask, asking us if they could do one the next oh, year, wow. if we were doing it the next year. And of course we did. And, and they would be contacted. Wow. Yeah. That's um, great. It got, it got very, um, it's, it's really inspiring to see i mm. think um because i have i've only done two now um i didn't do uh last year's or this year's but to see the the newcomers do it and that their faces when they're on that stage and like each new moment mm-hmm. getting closer and closer to like an almost reveal it's yes. not a complete yeah. reveal um they just like you, I've never seen anyone more present <laughs> than in that moment. Mm-hmm. I'm sure that was what what my face looked sure. like the first two times as well, and um, and I think there's something really delicious about that that inspires other people to do it too. Yeah, yeah. The few times that I've been, I've been to a couple of burlesque shows. Yeah, and there's a certain electricity, like. The audience is so supportive of everybody. There's never a, oh, like, yeah. I don't like that, but it's like everybody yeah. who gets up there is like Embracing cheered. It. Yeah. Yeah. Cheering. Yeah. Totally. It's like so, it's very inclusive that like, it doesn't matter. Yeah. It just matters that you're there. Exactly. And, and doing it. Exactly. Yeah. The thrill of it. And I think the audience recognizes the, like the bravery. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and so their cheering is not just because of the entertainment, but also because they're acknowledging that yeah. this is like, you know, it's it just takes guts. It takes guts. It really does take guts. <laughs> like not everybody's going to do it. Yeah. So yeah. that's great. Yeah. Um, Talk, moving back to that first project that you guys were, were trying to do, um, as I'm interested in sort of like unpacking a little bit um, that collective creation that you were trying and it not quite working. Was it that – do you think – I mean, there's been some time since you stopped doing it and, and maybe you have some some perspective on it. But was it a lack of direction? Was it – like you mentioned, like too many, too many cooks sort of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, what was it that sort of like prevented that project from becoming anything more than like a start? Yeah. I still, I still am trying to figure that out. Mm. Um, I mean, collective creation is just hard. Yeah, it is. It's, it's, you do need someone in like a, not a director's role, but a leadership role. Yeah. Yeah. But then how do you, uh, you know, like how do you even, how do you even go about writing script, uh, the, like a scene? Mm-hmm. Even? Yeah. Um, and like finding a unifying voice mm-hmm. because the way we had started doing it, we were each writing different scenes and then we would pick the kind of the best one. Yeah. Um, with the same like kernel of, of theme or idea or plot point. Yeah. Um, and 
and it just gets kind of choppy after a while. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's, um, and we also, we also had, we wanted it to be a, a, like plot driven Mm -hmm. and that was just hard for us. Mm -hmm. Like we, it, it became, um, I think we went from, I think it became a murder mystery. Mm -hmm. I remember (laughs) it became a murder mystery in a restaurant because we wanted to comment on all the, like, the sexism that happens of course, in, yeah. in restaurants and being a server. Um, but we needed a plot. <laughs> <laughs> and so that's where the murder mystery came in. And um, and that was just hard for us to figure out. Mm-hmm. We couldn't just, you know, make that make that work. Yeah. Um, and we tried different ways, too. Like, we, I mean, us sitting down and writing was one way. But also um, doing some improv workshops, um, we did... We would uh, take a scene, a kernel of a scene, and mm-hmm. riff off of that, yeah. and, and someone would write that stuff down. Um, I think maybe too we just lost steam. Well, because a year to work on something that we were still not totally—it's hard yeah, to keep it is. that end in sight mm-hmm. when you're in the thick of it, feeling that creative like, ugh, that frustration, like. It's yeah. hard to keep going. It's hard to do that with, with any project. There's that exactly. there's that initial like, oh, this is amazing. Yeah. And then when it gets hard, you're like, I don't wanna. Yeah. Like this is hard. This is hard. Yeah. This is hard. And and also, I know for me, things were other things were taking my attention away. Mm-hmm. Like I was working on other projects mm-hmm. and film and TV started mm-hmm. knocking on my door, so I was gonna go there. Yeah. Um and uh so the time commitment became uh, a bigger deal for me, and mm-hmm. and then Hillary was talking about moving back to um, to her home mm-hmm. out west, and so that that kind of also was in the works that was slowing things down. You know, yeah. like things would be changing in the near future, so it was not as mm-hmm. uh, motivated to, yeah. to keep going. Mm. It's hard to keep that sort of thing together. I knew some some guys uh, a few years ago, and they were like we're animators and we want to learn like film with people. So they like yeah. had these auditions and they got a bunch of actors together and they were like, all right, so what we want to do is we want to like, like every couple of weeks we'll get together and we'll like create a, 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 a like a short film, very short film, but we'll write it each week, like in a week. And then, and then you guys will come in and you'll do it. Yeah. But because it was so open ended, they were like, okay, so let's get your schedules. Nobody was available because yeah. it was like, oh, I'd like to do this, but this, yeah. that, and the other thing. So yeah. um, that sort of that great idea that they had just couldn't work because exactly. without a specific end goal or deadline, it's hard to herd the cats. Yeah, um, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Having, I mean, deadlines always help. Mm-hmm. And we yeah. would make deadlines for ourselves um, and we would meet them. It was just, you know, a little bit of not believing in ourselves as writers, Mm. you know, like we were actors primarily and um, to review our work, we'd be so critical of it. Like we're <laughs> I'm painting a really bad picture of our, our creative process. No, but I mean, <laughs> but there's so many factors, right? Yeah. Like that feed into uh, why, whether it will keep going and succeed or keep going and be really bad or just yeah. stop <laughs> and, or even just be good, but not flourish, you know, it's hard to make that, tra- that transition. I mean, I I was talking with, with Courtney about how, theater schools still aren't talking about production, mm-hmm. which is such an important part of uh, the theater yeah. landscape right now. Like nobody talks or teaches you how to do like producing. Yeah. Um, just like nobody really talks to you except okay, vocal mass doesn't count because you're not allowed to write your own thing. Right. Um, right. But exactly. nobody talks about writing. Mm hmm. Nobody like tells you how you're going to create your own your own work, yeah. and so to go from like the process of just being an actor to to having to then write a thing that's a difficult transition. It is. It really is, and I think you know you. Well, I, I went to theater school thinking this is where I go to be good enough to go to Shaw or Stratford, mm-hmm. and um, and then I'll work there for eight months of the year mm-hmm. and 
um, I won't have to worry too much <laughs> about creating my own work. And then that doesn't happen. And then all of a sudden it's like, well, here's what I have to do then. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and it's another, it's like, you know, another learning curve yeah. that I uh, wasn't expecting. There's, I mean, there's, again, there's only so many spots at Sean Stratford. Exactly. And they can only take so many of us. Yeah. And yeah, it's hard, it's hard to decide to realize that, oh, there's this whole aspect that we sort of didn't talk about. Yeah. I mean, when yeah. I was in theater school, it was like, they would acknowledge fringe, but it was like a thing that you might do if like you couldn't do that. Like if you didn't get if any other work. Get, yeah. Like, yeah. You know, it was like, Oh, maybe, you know, maybe you could do fringe. And it was right. like, and now it's like, and now it's like, it's like this massive fringe engine. Fringe can be wonderful. Yeah. It, it, yeah. And it can make careers. It can make things happen for yeah. people. So it's like a missing exactly. facet. Exactly. I think, I, I think there are some theater schools that might touch a little more on that kind of creation. I feel like, I might be getting this totally wrong, but I feel like Humber has a little bit of that kind of integration. Happening. Humber probably does, um, and good on them yeah. for it. And yeah. it's something that that needs to spread to other schools. Yeah, because um, we're still operating as though it's not a thing we need to know. Yeah, which is a problem. Yeah, definitely. Um, so the are, are you are you playing the role of Gray? In gray, I am awesome. I am. What's that? What I mean, Dorian. approaching that as something that that I guess you have to take the original and ignore it for the moment. For the moment, yeah. yeah. I mean, I have read the book a couple mm -hmm. of times, and um, luckily that's been it's been a year since I looked at it, mm -hmm. so it's nice and tucked away in the yeah. back of my subconscious. <laughs> um, yeah, because I I it is a different it is a different. story story in some ways mm -hmm. right and um so I'm, I'm trying to just work off of the script that we have at hand uh and the clues that you know other characters say about mm -hmm. me and, and, and my own arc letting that kind of form everything it's 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 a great role mm -hmm. it's really it's really good it's um the language in it that chris has juxtaposes both um uh, a little bit of heightened text mm -hmm. whenever uh, Dorian speaks to the statue, mm -hmm. but then in reality, when she's amongst you know her friends or other people, um, she really can't find words. She has no vocabulary. Mm -hmm. She comes from this like small town into this big city and is very naive but hungry for experience, mm -hmm. and so um, she can't she can't bridge that gap yet. Mm -hmm. Um, and I find that very fascinating mm. um, that we were talking about that in rehearsal the other, d other day, because I find sometimes I can be so tongue tied and I know that my brain has these massive, wonderful mm -hmm. expressions and things going on and I just can't get it out. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And uh, so I relate to the character in that sense of yeah. like in the privacy of my own imagination, like heightened text, like to the moon and back, right. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and it, yeah, it's an interesting character because she she is lacking something, mm -hmm. um, and so it it fuels her to keep wanting more, to experience more. She she's so hungry to create something that will impact either something or someone, mm -hmm. and she never quite quite finds it, mm -hmm. and uh, and to her demise in the end, mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, one of the things that that uh, Courtney was was mentioning is the interesting thing about so the company is a feminist company, mm -hmm. and we have a play where a number of the characters have been transposed to female roles. That's right. Um, but a lot of the some of the characters are not particularly nice to the other women. They do terrible things, oh, yeah. which can be a bit of a, a controversial idea as far as the idea of a feminist play goes in a lot of cases, Courtney was talking about how sometimes it seems like we're supposed to be creating things where we all get along, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. that's not really, I mean, the women have to be just as, as bad sometimes as, as men. And in this case, I think this, the story probably requires that they're yeah. not good. Yeah. Um, do you have any, any qualms about the, the, I don't want to say nastiness because I don't know, but like the... No, there's, there's lots yeah. of nastiness. Yeah, Dorian gets dark. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, the things she does throughout is it's uh, 
uh, unreconcilable. Like, mm. it's, it gets pretty bad. But um, I, I think I, I th- we kind of addressed this when we were working on that script behind mm-hmm. the restaurant one because we wanted we didn't necessarily want to paint pictures of ideal women mm-hmm. where everyone got along we wanted we wanted to flush out the different colors and and characteristics of just a human mm-hmm. but a mm-hmm. woman is is that human right and so that's kind of how i see this play too mm-hmm. that it's it's I think it still can be feminist because we're exploring feelings and um, motivations that everyone has mm. on some level. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's that story that's centered on a, a female that's making it hold together. You know, mm. like it's, mm-hmm. um, it's just human. Yeah. I think it's what I'm trying to say. Yeah. Like it's, it doesn't, matter if it's a man a man or a woman it's just we don't see enough women playing all those colors so we've put a woman in this and that's that's really the problem is really that we just don't see women playing the same range as as we give to 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 male characters definitely and that's and that's i mean that's one of the things that i think it's important that's being addressed here yeah um but something that needs to be addressed more broadly yeah by putting not just more women on the stage, but more women in the director's chair, in the artistic director's Definitely. chair, on the board of directors. We need all of that. Yeah. And we're really slow to get at that shit. Yeah, I know. Like, there's some shift, but uh, so, there's so much more room yeah. to go. Or there's a lot of room to go. And it seems like we're really slow as a theater world in getting there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's, it's unfortunate because... It just, it, it's the same with like minorities as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, like I, I remember, not that I'm a huge visible, visible minority, but I am a mix. Mm-hmm. And I remember when I was a kid, I didn't see anyone, you know, on stage like me. Yeah. There was, there's nobody who was like half brown. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> you know? yeah. And so even when I was like talking about becoming an actor with my mom, she's like, you can't be an actor. You're, you're, you're kind of brown. <laughs> <laughs> So it's, yeah. like, it's that it's that embedded, mm-hmm. um, and I feel it's sort of that embedded still with women in the role. Like it's, it's starting to be talked about. Like of course it's talked about. We're of talking about it, and we're talking about. There are initiatives as well. Yeah. Um, but somehow it's not enough. No, we we're talking about it. We're talking about women. We're talking about people of color. We talk about these things a lot. Yeah. Um, and I don't know, I've seen so many, uh, panel discussions about people of color and not being in, you know, uh, how to bring more people of color into the theater and to put them in those positions, but we're just talking about it. Yeah. We're not actually actually. seeing action or demanding action. It's very, it's very disheartening. It is. And it, it's, it's something that, you know, it, it needs to be adjusted on every single level, mm-hmm. like yeah. even elementary school. You know, like mm-hmm. uh, get get those creative f- fluids flowing mm-hmm. and nurture them all the way through. You yeah, know? like I, uh, I don't know. I, I feel like um, it has to start from the very beginning. Yes. Yeah. And we we can't we can't like back off of that. It just needs to follow through. Otherwise, no one, no one, we're not going to see the amount of female stories or mm-hmm. you know immigrant stories. Even yeah. if you want to you know compare the two, um, uh, there won't be enough so that when you know a woman in her thirties wants to put on a play with a a, a female um, a female story, mm-hmm. there isn't enough there. Like yeah. it, it had to start way back when. You know? Yeah. No, it's it. There's also, I mean, there's all the reluctance, like will people accept it and things mm-hmm. like that, which is so ridiculous that we have to have this same conversation mm-hmm. again and again. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, that's true. But I guess on the good side, this play is happening. Yes. Which is um, uh, featuring you and, and a bunch of of really talented women and mm-hmm. and uh, playing characters that that have so many different levels of 
darkness and goodness and, and yeah. just like they're people, like you were saying. Yeah. So, um, it's good that this is happening. Mm-hmm. Um, is there anything that's surprised you about the play so mm-hmm. far? Oh, that's, that's a good question. Has anything surprised me about the play? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> that's fine. I mean, that's a legitimate answer. No, nothing's like, coming immediately. I was, um, yeah, I don't know. I think, I think there are moments where how, like when I, when I really back off and see how, um, uh, like how dark, how unraveled mm-hmm. Dorian's, Dorian, Dorian's journey goes, mm-hmm. um, that's that's not necessarily surprising. It's more alarming for me, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, um, but in a good way. Yeah, definitely a like curious way of like, well, what what motivates someone to to go down that dark path? Yeah, how how strong? Like, what started it, and and what's what's continuing it? Like, yeah, that's, that's interesting to me. Um, but surprise? Yeah, I don't know. Have you found it? Have you like? had any 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 qualms or difficulties in 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 going that route um not yet Mm. i mean we're still early in rehearsals so it's it's still very it's not as as uh deep as i know it will go Mm -hmm, you know mm -hmm. like we're if you think of it as like a layering process, we've got like the first two layers of maybe right. 20 laid down right, right now. Yeah. Um, I know for me, um, as an actor, I get very involved with, um, with the character and, mm-hmm. um, I usually, I usually carry the character's vision worldview mm-hmm. with me all throughout rehearsals. It just helps me yeah. step into rehearsal. Um, not to say like I go around, you know, manipulating people yeah, yeah, like yeah, Dorian yeah. does. Yes, yeah, yeah. But there's something about that character that stays with me. Right. And um, I think in a character like this that is so damaging to other people, mm-hmm. <laughs> like I will definitely want to be able to to make that like, okay, if it show's over. Yes, let's, yeah. Let's take a yeah. shower. <laughs> there, there are, I mean, it's cer- it, sometimes it's like working on something and you sort of want to carry it with you. And then mm-hmm. other things you just have to learn how to let go yeah slough it off yeah and just uh yeah breathe some fresh air yeah because you can't carry all that stuff with you no no yeah it's it's nice working with this um group of people i've worked with some of them before or i'm just really close with Mm -hmm. some of them um so i anticipate it won't be difficult to like burst into laughing uh laughter Mm -hmm. you know at the end of the show because right. we have fun. Yeah. You know, I think that perspective of like as dark as it goes in the end, it's fun. Yes. Sir. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah. 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 I mean, we wouldn't do it if it, if there wasn't some of that, I mean, rehearsal yeah. can get really difficult sometimes, but by the time we're in performance, we should be like finding some fun. Yeah. In there. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And there is some, you know, I, I, I would think a lot of performers have this where there's something delicious about, you know, tapping into that oh. goopy stuff and like Everybody putting loves it to on play display. a bad guy now and then, yeah. you know, it's like if you, if you give somebody a choice, you could be the hero. You can have this really juicy villain role. Like yeah. Yeah. you'll want, you want the, the juice, you right? Want the juice. Yeah. You want the juice. It's, yeah. It's delightful. And to, you know, that trick of being that villain, but still, bringing the audience in, like mm-hmm. making them like you. Yeah. Like it's that's... that, is that Richard the third thing? Yeah. 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 Exactly. It, I was having a conversation with a friend of mine. We were watching house of cards. Oh yeah. And it was like, why do we like Frank Underwood so much? <laughs> right. Like he does nothing. He is a terrible person. I don't like him. And why do we <laughs> go with him? Why do, why do we, we enjoy with... him? I go with him know? because of his wife. <laughs> ah, see, that's, that's good. I mean, I'm always on her side. Like, yeah. But it's like, what is it that makes us stick with him? Mm. And I said, 
it's the Richard the Third thing. He always tells you exactly what he's going to do, and he follows through. Follows through, yeah. And he also acknowledges the audience. Mm-hmm. Like his relationship with that with the camera is very much drawing you in. Definitely. And it's it is that Richard the Third thing. Definitely. Like, I'm going to tell you, you're coming with me, and the yeah. audience just goes. They go. Yeah, they want to know what's going to happen next. It's yeah. so intriguing. Just, mm-hmm. You know, like, especially when it's someone doing things that are so manipulative oh, I know. and bad. Like, yeah, you know, the regular person doesn't do that on a daily basis. No, so the hunger and like curiosity of like, well, what? What's that about? Of course, yeah. we want to watch. <laughs> well, I mean, that's that's Dorian, isn't it? That's Dorian. That's like yeah. doing all of those all of those things, and yeah. yet also bringing the audience along for the ride. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Have you given thought to like what is it about Dorian that brings the audience along for the ride? Are you like oh. that's something you're going to discover? I think I'm still discovering that. I think. I think maybe there's a bit of, at least because what dr- draws me to Dorian a little bit is that that universal need to make meaning mm-hmm. of something mm-hmm. in life, to feel like we matter. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that's a huge motivator for Dorian. Mm-hmm. Um, the fact that she never really grasps it. Mm. You know, that patheticness. I think that's very sympathetic. Like, I'm mm. very sympathetic to that yeah. kind of character. And I would hope that the audience, I feel like that might be what, what connects on a, a more visceral mm-hmm. level. That, mm. that empathy for someone who just can't find it. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, but also those, those manipulative moments where you see someone quote unquote naive mm-hmm. take a plunge somewhere completely calculated. Mm-hmm. That's, yeah. that's, that's fun to watch. It is fun to watch. <laughs> it's one of those, like you squirm, you're like, don't do it. Don't mm-hmm. do it. But mm-hmm. Or it comes out of the blue and yeah. there's like that, <gasps> you know, like that. Yeah. Really? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's a lot of fun. Yeah. That's a lot of fun. Yeah. Um, so the show opens uh, September 21st. That's right. Um, you, when we're, as we're recording this, uh, you were saying you've got, uh, you know, some occasional rehearsals. And then is it like two weeks of rehearsal in September? Is it? Yeah. I think that the last week of August mm-hmm. is pretty intensive. And then um, the f- next two weeks in September. And then we get into tech and yeah. then the show opens the 21st. That's going to be pretty intense, like doing this stuff with Dorian, like yeah. so intensely. It's yeah. one thing to do it like every once I in know. a while, but like to spend like two weeks of intensive time with it, that's going to be, it's going to be fun and a challenge, isn't it? I think so. I think so. I'm looking forward to it. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. I, I see it as being a fun challenge. Mm-hmm. I really do. I, 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 I get to play this role that is that broad range mm-hmm. and I don't get to play that a lot. No. So I, I, this experience is like a feast for me nice. and I'm gonna, yeah. I'm gonna, you know, try and keep that in as much perspective as possible. Nice. Yeah. yeah. Well, I'm looking forward to seeing it. Oh, wonderful. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for talking with me today. Yeah. It's been a lot of fun. Thank you.